Okay, so in a previous video, then we had outlined how to uh, run uh, our code in the Google Colab. Um, and then we installed uh, the Tidyverse package. We make the library available in uh, the Google Colab. Uh, we already installed uh, data and the state is also available in Google Colab. So let's see, maybe I need to install that again to make the data available. And uh, we'll just run and install, takes a second. Uh, so in this new instance of uh, the R notebook that applies the Tidyverse, uh, where we're, we try to examine using the R Tidyverse suite, the effect on uh, the effect of sex and class of passengers on in determining survival, uh, we needed to load in the data uh, from Titanic Tree. So we use this package, it's a package available in R. And uh, I mentioned that package before. It loads in the Titanic uh, Tree data set, and then all these uh, variables are set out. So the passenger class, whether the individual survived, if you didn't. Uh, zero for drowned, uh, one for survived, uh, the name of the passenger, the sex, it's a factor, age, and so on, right? Now, if we go into, if we um, take a look then at our data set, it's clear that uh, R automatically uh, uh, looks at the variables and uh, from the variables it uh, applies, uh, it considers if the variable is a factor or not. Uh, that's true of um, data that come raw data. Now, in this instance, the data is curated, and uh, you know it has been uh, set up uh, specifically for R. But it is that Titanic tree uh, data set, and the data set is um, um, there is a link there to the source. And you can read through that, and there's quite a bit of interesting detail. Um, so these are already the the the, um, the variables are already organised as being factors, integers, uh, doubles, uh, so on. Uh, later we might make a change. For instance, uh, survived might be considered as a factor, and we can see why that might be important for some types of visualisation. Uh, we also apply then because we've loaded in installed the tidyverse suite then we can just um, pull down the deplier syntax deplier is one of the packages in uh, the tidyverse suite and we were able to set up this fairly straightforward pivot type table where we could look at the numbers who were drowned relative to the numbers who had survived and then we considered that in terms of a visualization, and we could see the numbers here tallied with the numbers, those who survived. So if you survived, uh, it's zero. If you, sorry, if you, if you drowned, it was zero, otherwise one. Now it makes no sense, 0 0.5, 1 1.5, negative uh, 0.5. So we might consider later to, to convert this to a factor as opposed to looking at it as an integer as it is now presented here as an integer survived is considered as an integer. And that means we would allow for other very values other than one and zero. Okay. And that's why it's the data is appearing this way. So we can make a change later to rectify that or to adjust for that. Um, we would also like to investigate a little bit, maybe how we would enhance maybe the how we present our information. So we put labels and labels are useful. So the number of passengers here on the vertical axis and in the uh, the title then, uh, Titanic passengers survival numbers. Okay. So that's an enhancement and it improves our visualization. Uh, we would also would like to set up tables that somehow organize a bit by category uh, what's going on. So remember the 
the data set we're working with is Titanic 3. Uh, we have this pipe operator uh, from the plier. That means, okay, let's take the Titanic 3 and then group by sex and then count uh, the numbers associated with the, each sex. So we've, we break it down for male and female. And we can see that uh, more males traveled uh, on the Titanic than females. Um, and again, that's another interesting um, a bit of information. Um, again, we might be interested in looking at um, not only just the sex, but can we consider organizing the data along uh, sex and those who survived? And maybe we can obser observe something from outputting a table. So uh, we can break apart the females into groups who drowned and survived, and likewise for males, those who drowned and one for survived. Uh, and we can see that the ratio of uh, female surviving relative to females drowning is quite good in the sense that most females survived, whereas uh, the reverse is true for males. Mo more males drowned than males who survived. So the ratios are somewhat reversed and the odds of survival are very different from men and women. So that's something that we glean. Again, we, we're getting that from the deplier syntax. We take the data set, Titanic 3, and then we group by those who survived and sex. So we're looking at both the sex, male, female, and also along the lines of uh, survived, one, zero for drowned. And then we count, we output, and then count the, the numbers in that specific category. So we're satisfying, uh, looking at, we're organizing our data in terms of drowned or survived and sex, and then the number associated in that category, we have four categories. Okay, so again, uh, it would be nice to um, run the same graph as before, but include in make it a little bit richer to uh, look at the sex of the um, the sex of the passengers and then maybe fill in for survived right so this fill syntax uh, typically what that would do in the ggplot2 package uh, remember ggplot2 is one of the uh, the tidyverse suite, one of the packages in the tidyverse suite. Um, typically, the effect of that, if we uh, would take a look, if we include it in fill, uh, we should have uh, a way of categorizing and looking at, okay, we've males and females, and then what proportions survived and drowned. Um, so if that wasn't there, if let's say, for instance, we remove that um, and okay so I'll just remove and run okay we get the same graph and in theory uh, we should get in theory we should get a, a fill we should be able to fill in so let's I'm going to paste that back in uh, control V so just control V and I should be able to get some, and run that again, I should be able to get uh, more detail in the graph. The, the, the problem here is that if we consider survived, it's a one or zero, and in the data set, it's considered as a integer, we want to maybe change that as a factor. Uh, and um, to change that as a factor, um, we should probably uh, create a new data set. So instead of working with Titanic 3, we'll take a look, we'll create a new data set called Titanic 4. We'd like to preserve Titanic 3 uh, as the original data set because everybody knows what this refers to. Then I create a new data set. I'm gonna call it Titanic 4. Take a glimpse at it. It's the same as Titanic 3 for the moment. 
and survived here is a is an integer i want to convert that survived then to a factor if i run uh, as factor titanic 4 converts to a factor it will change this then to be um, a factor as, as opposed to an integer and then i i can glimpse at that titanic for data set again. So let's run this snippet of code. And you can see uh, by implementing this two lines of code, and I now have converted the survive to um, a factor as opposed to an integer. That's useful because it means when I take that snippet of code that I had before here and run again with Titanic 4, I now will get more detail so I have to be careful here. Uh, should put in the pound sign. Run again. Because I've put in Titanic uh, survived as a factor because it's now seen as a factor in the Titanic four data set, the new data set. Instead of getting, instead of this graph, right, which is a good graph, I get this graph, and it's quite easy to interpret what's going on. We divide up the group between male and female. And then we break down between those who survived, the blue and the red who drowned. And you can see the majority of females survived, whereas the majority of males uh, drowned. The red here for males denotes the, those males who, who drowned. Obviously, they make up a majority here. And that's instantly visible from the visualization. That's one of the great strengths of um, visualization. Okay, so we might want to look then at the, not just the survival based in terms of sex, but then uh, what about the passenger class? And again, if we go back to the glimpse and look at our data set, the P class <coughs> is, the is considered here as a factor, that's great. And this first group here is first class but we would have also had second class and third class in the grouping, right? So um, if we wanted to observe, then just basically get some basic raw data. Again, we can use this supplier function. Let's take our data set, organize it, group it by survived. Instead of looking at sex, let's look at class and then consider the numbers. And you can see uh, the pipe operator right, allows us uh, to very quickly uh, create the equivalent of what we might consider a pivot table, right, those who are used to using Excel, where we can say, okay, organize the group, the data set in terms of those who drowned, those who survived, and then break down for first class, second class, third class, and look at the relative numbers. And, and, and it, if we look at um, first class, a uh, substantial proportion of people here survived. When we look at second class, you can see 119 as opposed to 158. So more people in second class drowned than survived. And then when we look at third class, uh, more, uh, way more people drowned here in third class compared to those who survived in, uh, in third class. So that those who, who drowned, those who drowned, I should say, way more of these drowned than those who survived in third class. Uh, for second class, it's uh, again a majority uh, drowned relative to those who survived. But in, in first class, a majority of people survived relative to those who drowned. So obviously class is a, is a, a driver here. Uh, again, we could make this a little bit more um, subtle and nuanced if we included in our pivot table here the effect of not just class but sex and then observe the effect of those broke the group down in terms of those who survived and drowned by class one two three and we'll break that apart then for male and female so let's run that again we know that females did uh, better overall and again, uh, the detail here is slightly, uh, it's a lot more nuanced. Uh, when we uh, look at our data 
and have this type of output. Uh, sometimes it may be just easier to uh, run a visualization where we address the same issues. Right? Where we say, okay, let's look at first class, second class and third class. And let's look at those who survived one as opposed to those who drowned. So that's equivalent to what we have here. And then in terms of what we have here, we could pre present that as a visualization um, and break this apart for male and females. So take each of the classes, uh, one, two, and three, break it apart for males and females, uh, male and female, class one, male, female, class two, male, female, class three. The visualization we have here captures the output that we have here. Uh, it's fairly clear, I suppose, uh, that the visualization is an enhancement in the sense that uh, we can clearly see if you're in first class and female, your chances of survival are extremely good relative uh, to males in third class. Uh, females in third class did better than males, but did a lot worse compared to females in first class. That's also true of females compared to second class. Males in second class did quite poorly in terms of survival. Uh, males in third class did poorly in terms of survival. Males in first class did a lot better. So this visual visualization here is a, a good uh, demonstration of the uh, plotting graphing capability available in the tidyverse and uh, we can save this because it's in the google colab we can save our our notebook right and then we can also share as well uh, and provide a link so that also is quite useful um, okay, in the next uh, video clip, I'll have a look at age. Um, but in this video clip, we follow, um, we implement a number of pivot tables and then in a par parallel fashion, try to visualize those using the syntax of the ggplot2 package where we use uh, bar charts and um, Again, we use the bar chart here and uh, a bar chart, right? Uh, but we facet wrapped, we use this syntax, which meant we were able to take the data that we have, the, the visualization that we had here, and then we broke it apart into tree graphs. And then we uh, were able to uh, set out the graph in terms of the female and male and this ad additional nuance that we can then incorporate in uh, allows us to more intelligibly gra grasp the impact or the effect of both uh, class and sex on survival prospects.